Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PTQ.com. I'm here to talk about uninstalling software with PowerShell. Uh, we've got quite a few in our series of uh, doing different things with PowerShell. We decided to go a bit more uh, practical usage now, just to kind of give you an idea of what you can begin to do with that. So the, the first thing we're gonna go over is where you're gonna find your uninstall strings, which is it's gonna be in the registry. So you have these uh, top two here, which is local machine software. I don't have my highlighter turned on. That's okay, we just pretend like that highlighted. <clears throat> and then it's looking at whether it's, it's going to be slightly different if it's 32 or 64 bit. And it's going to go in there and there's an uninstall string. It's going to grab all of that software. Uh, if we're looking for a specific one, we're going to go and put in here the local machine where get child item is the command we're running. And we're going to basically look for, we'll do seven zip first on this one. So we're going to run line eight with F8 to auto run that one. And if you wonder what that looks like, we'll come in here, we'll just print out the variable real quick. You can see 7-zip and it has the uninstall string of uh, program files uninstall.exe. Uh, the reason we start with the exe is there's going to be a di different thing. If it's an MSI, it's always going to be, you know, forward slash, I'm going to look it up because I've drawn a blank. You, forward slash x, then it's going to be qn and no restart is probably a safe one to put in there. And that's just a way to make sure MSI, it's, it's static across the board. If it's an exe, you're going to have to Google it. We happen to know it's a forward slash capital S for 7-zip is where we have that one here. Uh, so we're going to go and run that. We're going to start process from the uninstall string that we grabbed right there, just run that, that uninstall string there. And we're going to run that and we have a wait at the end where it's going to start the process. It's going to run the command with the argument capital S and it's going to wait for it to complete. Uh, the reason we're using this example is not because we have anything against 7-zip, it's just a quick uninstall. And that one's done now. So if we come back up and we run line eight again and take a look at uh, what that variable is, you can see that it is gone. So we have completely uninstalled 7-zip from the machine and it's gone. Um, there are some cases, and we're gonna use VS Code to kind of highlight this one. We're gonna run and grab all of that information. Uh, F8 is the command for that still. It hasn't changed no matter how much I want it to. Occasionally there is going to be one that includes a Right there, a quiet uninstall string automatically. So it has an uninstall string, but it has one where it actually puts the silent parameter in there. That seems to be coming more common, but it's not super common. So maybe you have something you can check for that where if you want to automate it, you can, or you don't have to go look it up. It's just right there. Uh, but like 7-zip, we had to go and find uh, the S with uh, VS Code. You can just see right there what it is from the line, the quiet uninstall string, it save you a little bit of time. All right, so now if we want to take a look at the MSI one, we're going to go and rebuild the uninstall variable. Run that one real quick just so we can make sure that's working. Verify our work. We have paint.net. It is using an MSI and it gives here a GUID to uninstall from. Basically, if you run MSI exec, uh, forward slash X is to uninstall, I to install, uh, and then specify the GUID. It's going to do the uninstall. But like we said, the parameters are going to be the same. The parameters are going to be uh, QN and no restart every time. I have seen somewhere if it's like the uninstall is UNS and then three digits is normally 001.exe that uh, very silent tends to work with that one, but I can't guarantee that 100% of the time. So still do the research on that one. So this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start MSI exec. We're going to run the uninstall string we built here with the uninstall string we replaced forward slash I with forward slash X. That's not there all of the time but it is there enough at the time to just have that replaced in there. If it doesn't exist, it's going to ignore it. If it does exist, it's going to switch it over to the uninstall. I think it's interesting that they have the uninstall string, but the install parameter in there. And then replace an MSI exec because we're calling that one manually with the start process. So we're specifying, we're adding in our uninstall string and our silent parameters. And now this one should uninstall uh, paint.net, but it did not. Let's see what we're doing. Oh, it's because I never ran the line to actually build the uninstall string. Let's run that way. They'll run it the correct way this time. We have to build the uninstall string, not just talk about how we built the uninstall string. And that one is uninstalled. We'll come up here, run line seven to verify that it is gone. And that one's gone. Uh, the last thing, and this makes it a little bit easier, is if you have, uh, I believe it's Windows 10 or PowerShell 5.0, they have this git package with the Python uninstall package. So instead of finding the rest of all that everything, I can just run here git package for Foxit. 
and it's going to grab a lot of that same, same information right there. You can see it has the source, the provider name. It is an MSI. And if you pipe that into an install package, it's going to put in your silent parameters for the MSI automatically. Uh, not so much if it's not the MSI. Run that one, and we are uninstalling Foxit. So that's a quicker, clean way to do it. It's just not going to work all the time. It's just kind of another option for that one. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to that with this one. It's this is all uninstalling from a single machine. If you want to uh, run from another machine, you're either going to want to invoke the command against that machine and supply the credentials, or you can use something like, I'm just going to say PDQ deploy, and you can send that across all the machines and it's going to remove all of that for you. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.